Welcome to the Plant Structure Lab. We will begin first with a discussion of types of plant cells. Parenchyma cells are unspecialized cells that carry out most of a plant's metabolism. Parenchyma cells are alive at maturity and have thin primary cell walls. Cholenchyma cells function in support of the plant tissue because their primary cell walls are somewhat thicker than those of parenchyma. These are also alive at maturity. Sclerenchyma cells mainly consist of dead cells that have both primary and secondary cell wall, which provides support. These cells are dead at maturity. Xylem and phloem are types of vascular plant tissue. Phloem is made up of sieve tubes, which conduct sugars produced by photosynthesis. Cells that function to pump the sugars into the sieve tubes are companion cells. Xylem is made up of vessel elements and tracheids, which are hollow because they are dead at maturity. They function much like straws that conduct water and minerals from the roots up into the shoots. The four plant organs are the leaves, which function in photosynthesis, stomata, or stoma, would be the singular form, are the pores through which carbon dioxide and oxygen diffuse into and out of the leaf. Roots, these function in anchoring the plant into the soil, absorbing water and nutrients, and also may be a food or photosynthetic sugar storing region in the plant. Stems function in supporting the leaves and serves as a conduit for exchange of materials between the shoot and the root systems. Reproductive structures. These are really modified leaves that have taken on the job of producing the gametes. In angiosperms, these modified leaves are the parts of the flower. In this diagram of a plant, the above ground portion is the shoot system, made up of the stem, leaves, and flowers. The below ground portion is the root system. Here you see a tap root and lateral roots growing from the central tap root. The apical bud is where the shoot apical meristem is located. The area on the stem where a leaf attaches is termed the node and the region along the stem between the nodes is termed the internode. Axillary buds are formed in the axle of a leaf. When they develop the plant is much fuller. The leaf is the primary photosynthetic organ and is made up of the blade and the petiole which is the stalk that attaches the organ to the stem. The flower functions as the reproductive organ, the floral parts being the sepals, petals, stamens, and carpels. We will discuss floral morphology in depth later in this lab. Here we see a model of the leaf. Areas of interest associated with this plant organ is the thick cuticle which prevents water loss. The epidermis, along with the cuticle, both upper and lower, make up the dermal plant tissue. Guard cells are specialized epidermal cells which surround a plant pore called a stoma through which carbon dioxide and oxygen gases diffuse. Here is another view on the top of the leaf. Here you see the guard cells and a schematic drawing of the guard cells surrounding the pore, the stoma. Specific regions of the mesophyll is the palisade mesophyll made up of a column shaped cell and a spongy mesophyll made up of loosely spaced cells. The vascular bundle makes up a tiny vein through which water and minerals are conducted in the xylem tissues and the sugars that are produced through photosynthesis via the phloem. 
Here is a model of a cross section of a dicot stem. We know just by looking at the arrangement of vascular bundles of xylem and phloem in a cylinder that this is a dicot. Between the xylem and phloem is a meristem termed the vascular cambium. This meristem is a region of actively dividing cells which gives rise to secondary xylem and secondary phloem year after year in woody plants. Secondary xylem becomes the wood rings and secondary phloem forms some of the bark. We will discuss this further later in the lab. Young stems may also have a cuticle, a waxy layer, and a ring of epidermal cells. In young dicots, there is a region of ground tissue along the outer rim of the stem. This is known as the cortex, and another region of ground tissue to the center, the pith. This is a view of the same dicot stem, but now you are looking at the longitudinal plane of section. See how the phloem and xylem vascular tissues look much like straws running through the stem, areas of conduction. Here is a model of a cross section of a monocot stem. We know just by looking at the arrangement of the vascular bundles of xylem and phloem being scattered throughout that this is a monocot as in comparison the vascular bundles were set up in a ring form in the dicots. There is no vascular cambium in monocots, so monocot plants do not have secondary growth. They give rise to lateral growth. Here is a model of a cross section of a dicot stem. You see here, excuse me, a model of a section of a dicot root. You see here the epidermis making up the dermal tissue a ring of ground tissue known as the cortex. But here is a cylinder made up of a single ring of cells called the endodermis, as seen here. The vascular tissue is found here in the center of the root. Xylem is set up in an X formation here in pink and the phloem lies in the axles of the xylem. This is the view of the longitudinal section of the root. The root tip is made up of three zones of growth. Let's start here at the tip where we find the root apical meristem giving rise to primary growth. This area of the root tip is very tender, so our protective root cap surrounds this much like a sewing thimble protects one's thumb. So here is the root cap. This area is known as the zone of cell division. Cells that were laid down earlier here in this zone is known as the zone of elongation where cells lengthen and push the root tip further down into the soil. Cells in the zone of maturation, or you may also hear it termed or called the zone of differentiation, completes their development and specialization and they now are either dermal, vascular, or ground tissues. There are two types of growth that takes place in dicots. Primary growth occurs in the tips of the plant body where apical meristems are located, here in the terminal bud. So the terminal bud will be a site where one would find an apical meristem. Primary growth give ri gives rise to cells which cause the plant to lengthen up as the shoot grows taller and down as the roots grow deeper. Secondary growth is produced by lateral meristems. The vascular cambium here and again here is found between phloem and xylem, the vascular tissues and dicots. This is a lateral meristem. The vascular cambium is a lateral meristem. The first year, the apical meristem gives rise to primary xylem and primary phloem. Each year after that, the vascular cambium lays down secondary xylem to the inside and secondary phloem to the outside. As seen here in this view of a tree trunk, 
The secondary xylem has been laid down year after year, creating the rings of wood. Yes, you can count the rings to tell the age of the tree. The secondary phloem makes up part of the bark. The layer of bark is not as thick as the wood because the bark cracks and falls off. Now let's take a look at flowers, fruits, and seeds. The angiosperm flower is the reproductive shoot consisting of the sepals. A whorl or ring of sepals is known as the calyx. Petals, a whorl of petals is known as the corolla. Stamens, made up of the filament and anther. A whorl of stamens is the androecium. Carpels, made up of the stigma, style, and ovary, and within the ovary are the ovules. A whorl of carpels is known as the gynoecium. Here's a model of a flower. Sepals, remember collectively known as the calyx, are the first floral parts to develop. They function in protecting the floral bud. Petals, collectively known as the corolla, functions in attracting pollinators. The male part of the flower, the stamen, remember collectively known as the androecium, is again made up of the stalk, the filament, and the pollen producing anthers. Remember from our alternation of generations view of angiosperms, pollen grains are the male gametophytes. In the center is the female part of the flower, the carpal collectively known as the gynoecium. Within the ovary is the ovule which contains the female gametophyte, the embryo sac. When pollination takes place and then fertilization, an embryo forms. The embryo sends a hormonal message to the ovary and it then develops and matures into the fruit. The ovule matures and develops around the embryo and becomes the seed. So remember, the ovary of a flower develops into the fruit and the ovule develops into the seed. The fruit aids in seed dispersal and the seeds protect the embryo until germination when environmental conditions are conducive for growth. Fruits can be categorized by how they form. Here are some examples of fruits. A simple fruit that forms from a single ovary housing ovules that develops into, into the seeds. Beans are examples of simple fruits. So yes, when you eat the pod of the bean, you are eating a fruit. Aggregate fruits develop from many ovaries within a single flower. Strawberries are examples of aggregate fruits. Many ovaries develop on a common receptacle. The ripened receptacle is actually the red, fleshy, sweet tissue of the strawberry, and the tiny little brown spots are actually the dried carpels with the seeds housed within. Multiple fruits develop when the carpels from many different flowers born on a common receptacle fuse together. Pineapple is an example of a multiple fruit. The woody tissue in the center of the pineapple that we cut away, that is the common receptacle. Let's now take a look at the seed which protects the tiny embryo. Remember, the tiny embryo is actually the new sporophyte for the next generation. In monocots, double fertilization produces much more endosperm than is produced in dicots. Dicots have two cotyledons, remember the seed leaves, and monocots only have one. The seed coat serves as a protective covering for the whole structure. Let's take a look at the comparison of dicot and monocot seeds. Corn is a monocot. You see monocots store a lot of triploid endosperm tissue to serve as a food resource for the germinating seed and growing seedling. In corn, the one cotyledon is known as the scutellum and the embryonic leaves are known as the plumule. Beans are examples of dicots. Dicots produce very little endosperm, so the two large cotyledons 
serve as the food reserve for the germinating seed and growing seedling. Hope you have enjoyed your tour of plant structure.